Demetra Hutchinson, and welcome to Columbia Matters. This month, we're bringing you the show from the Columbia Arts Center located in the village of Longreach. The Columbia Arts Center is one of Columbia's hidden treasures, and a little bit later in the show, you'll find out why. Columbia Archives will be sponsoring several events throughout the coming months in celebration of Columbia's founder, James Rouse's 100th birthday. Barbara Kellner, director of the Columbia Archives, has more. James Rouse would be celebrating his 100th birthday this year. He was born on April 26, 1914. Columbia Archives is celebrating this event with a series of events from now through the fall. On Saturday, May 17th, I'll be meeting dozens of people right here at the dock of Wild Lake. Jim Rouse lived along the lake, so this was his neighborhood, and we're going to explore the history, the architecture, and the flora and fauna of this area. This is a very popular path, so it's a little bit of a challenge to find things that are new and different. Everyone is familiar with the dam, but if you look closely, you see the special texture of the concrete. Did you know that this texture was formed by using the logs found at the lake bed to line the concrete molds? The newest landmark around the lake is a bench dedicated to Jim Rouse and the three Cherokee dogwoods that surround it. Let's go take a look. So this is a bench overlooking Wild Lake and in view is the house that Jim Rouse called home for um, about 20 years. On April 25th, which was Arbor Day, Blossoms of Hope Project and the Columbia Association dedicated this bench along with these trees that you can see with the pink ribbons. The plaque on the bench says, The Life and Legacy of James Rouse, a Centennial Celebration. And we use this quote, Beauty is free if you really plan to respect both the land and man. One of the stated goals of Columbia was to respect the land, to preserve, in fact, ennoble the land. Wild Lake is a man-made lake and was one of the aspects of Columbia that speaks to that goal. Jim Rouse loved this lake. He could watch the waterfowl from his windows. He could walk around the lake and enjoy the nature and also the people that walked around the lake. The walk along is just one in a series of events honoring Jim Rouse. A party at Merriweather occurs on May 4th. Several exhibits are planned, as well as a symposium in the fall. The bike about, which is on September 13th, will also start right here at Wild Lake and again, explore Jim Rouse's neighborhood. So whether you're a walker, whether you're a biker, whether you just love to learn about Columbia history and the role of Jim Rouse, his vision, his optimism, his hope, please join us as we continue to look at the life of Jim Rouse and what it means to all of us. Thanks, Barbara. I'm here now joined by manager of the Columbia Arts Center, Liz Henze. Hi, Liz, how are Hi, you? Hi, teacher, nice to see you it's again. good to see you again. It's been a little while. I know. Um, Take us around, um, in your mind, take us around the Art Center and tell people who aren't familiar with it all the things that you have to offer here. Well, we're a comprehensive art center. We offer classes for all ages. We have summer art camp coming up. We have uh, classes in oil painting, drawing, glass, ceramics, uh, something for everyone here. Great. So in addition to the classes that people can take, uh, you also have an, a functioning art gallery, correct? We do. We have rotating shows from September through June. And during May, we have two really neat shows. Uh, the Art of Ghana runs May 8th through May 18th. And it features a wide selection of Canadian art uh, by local artists, local oh, Canadian exciting. artists, as well as some international artists. It's being sponsored by Columbia Association's uh, International Exchange and Multicultural Program. Wonderful. And we also have our faculty student show, which is a real high point in our year of shows. Uh, it exhibits, it reflects all, all the works by our teachers and our students. Nice. And it really showcases what we offer here. Right, so people can come and get an idea of the types of 
classes that they could take, for example, by looking at the art that exactly. the students produce? Wonderful, wonderful. Yeah. So tell us, with this, with this hidden treasure here in Columbia, here in Long Reach, tell us, how much does it cost like if a family wants to come out for an afternoon and enjoy uh, the uh, gallery, how much, uh, what's your entrance fee? Well, the nice thing is everything here in the galleries are free. So uh -huh. we invite all ages to come enjoy our shows free of charge. We're open seven days a week. Okay, great. And you have a website if people want to sign up for classes or get your hours, that kind of thing? We have a page, a part of Columbia Association's website. So please go to Columbia Association's website and check out the Art Center's page. Great. Thanks, Liz. Earth Day was last month, but we can all take steps to conserve energy and protect our environment every day. CA's energy manager, Jeremy Scharfenberg, tells us more about CA's initiatives to be more sustainable and offers tips on how you too can become more sustainable. The Columbia Association is actively working to reduce energy consumption, operating costs, and our carbon footprint. One of the most important steps we can take is by focusing on the HVAC or heating, ventilation, and air conditioning equipment throughout our building portfolio. Here at the Supreme Sports Club, we're installing new air conditioning units that are among the most energy efficient available and meet stringent Energy Star specifications. These units also use advanced programmable thermostats to ensure that they operate only when needed. CA also has an aggressive ongoing preventative maintenance program with all of our equipment to ensure that it is operating as efficiently as possible. This includes regular filter changes and detailed inspections of various components. Columbia residents can also take proactive steps regarding the maintenance and replacement of their HVAC equipment. Because these systems account for about half of total energy use in the average home, efficiency improvements can have significant impacts on utility bills. BGE Smart Energy Savers Program offers lots of great rebates to help homeowners maintain and upgrade their HVAC equipment. BG is currently offering incentives of up to $900 for heating and cooling system upgrades. And if your equipment is more than 10 years old, replacement is something that should be considered. New HVAC equipment can be greater than 30% more efficient than older systems. BG is also offering incentives for cooling efficiency verification and improvement of existing HVAC systems. It is important to make sure that preventative maintenance is still undertaken for even small residential systems. In addition to upgrading and maintaining equipment, Utilizing programmable thermostats to make sure that heating and cooling is only provided when really needed can further help reduce energy consumption and energy costs. The Columbia Association is taking steps to reduce energy consumption, greenhouse gas emissions, and utility costs. And we invite all Columbia residents to see how they can also take steps to make Columbia a more sustainable community. Thanks, Jeremy. A new club, Families in Nature, encourages families to come out and get connected with their neighbors while enjoying the benefits of nature. Let's head over to the Wild Lake Park to learn more. Uh, my family moved to Columbia when I was in fourth grade and I went through Longfellow Elementary, Harper's Choice Middle, Wild Lake, HCC, and then moved away for about 10 years for school and for work. And when my husband and I were getting ready to get married and thinking about wanting to have a family of our own, we decided we want to come back from California and move to Columbia, which is where most of my family still is. And so fast forward, I have a four-year-old and a one-and-a-half-year-old and we go out and play in the woods. I grew up playing in all the time, same neighborhood, and there just aren't that many kids out there with us anymore. And so that was really um, noticeable to me. And I grew up, my school, my work has all been kind of in the environmental field. And I had read a book called um, Last Child in the Woods, Saving Our Children from Nature Deficit Disorder. And that really put a lot together for me. Um, it basically says that if people are gonna care about the natural world and help to take care of it, they have to spend time playing in it themselves and have that direct personal relationship with nature. And if it's just academic, you learn about it in a book, you never really learn to love it and it never means anything personal to you. And so thinking about that from sort of the academic side, and the professional side and thinking about just my experience growing up playing in the woods and becoming an environmental professional and seeing how there aren't other kids out there, I really wanted to do something in Columbia that would help get the families out and all the awesome nearby nature we have. I and mean, think Columbia is really unique with the amount of open space we have and all the pathways and lakes and beautiful natural areas. So if there's a way I could help families know where to go and come together and have a sense of community and fun about it, um, that really felt meaningful to me personally. I'm in my third year of a PhD program in sustainability education and my big question is how do people come to care about the natural world and take care of the environment 
and most of the research shows that there are pre three primary things that can create the conditions for people to care about the environment. No matter what they do with their lives, they'll take the time to help recycle or do other environmentally uh, beneficial behavior. And that's basically spending time outside, especially as a child, then having a positive adult role model for that time outside. So somebody, a close adult that the child would spend time outdoors with who would teach them like, hey, look at the beautiful tree or do you notice the turtle and let's pick up that piece of trash. And then participating in some sort of organization that has an environment or nature focus. And so family nature clubs do all those three things. They get kids and their parents outside, having a good time together, creating a sense of place and connection to their community in the natural world gets the parents and the kids out there together, having those kind of special moments and memories of fun and shared attention. And there's also a little bit of an organize, organized structure where you're out there with other families and out there with people who might have more knowledge about nature um, than you would. And so you can be actively learning too. So it fulfills those three kind of criteria that helps to lead people to have lifelong care of nature. And so that's what really had me want to create a family nature club here in Columbia is, is that sort of academic reason. And then I just want to be out in nature with my kids and I want to do that with other families having fun and, and really taking advantage of all that Columbia has to offer. I've applied for lots of grants and I've been fortunate enough to receive several. Um, haven't received several. The, the first one I received was from the Columbia Association. They have a proactive grants program. So I was able to submit an application to them to help fund the materials that I've purchased for Columbia Families in Nature. Um, a lot of field materials, field guides, nets, um, all sorts of stuff, um, you know, maps and the like to hand out to the families. And then I also received a grant from the Toyota Audubon Together Green Fellowship. So um, they've been two incredibly supportive grants and CA in particular has also helped just from a staff perspective. Some of their staff, uh, like John McCoy, the watershed manager, has come out and volunteered his time to teach us on the hikes. The open space professionals have also come out and helped to educate families during our hikes as well. So that's really valuable to have that knowledge during our outings. I think it makes it a lot richer for the families that are here. The goal of the club is, is multifaceted. Say first and foremost, let's get people outside uh, together as a family. I think it's really important that kids be outside, be active. Everybody knows that that's a really important thing these days is to have that opportunity for children to go outside and just play in nature, have that unstructured time to turn over a rock or a log or see a turtle or an owl in the tree, and that's limited these days. So connection to nature, connection to family, and then a sense of connection to other families, so the social and environment environmental natural community of Columbia and kind of commitment to um, this community I think is really valuable as well and a, a real possibility for this club. And today was our, our fifth outing. We just started on March 23rd. We have outings every almost every Sunday afternoon, two to three weekends a month. And we have, in the first four outings, a total of 212 people had showed up cumulatively across those four outings. So I hope it continues to grow and that we get people from all over Columbia and the surrounding area out to explore new parts of uh, Columbia in particular and then kind of Howard County at large. There are 25 outings scheduled this year. So just in 20, 2014 alone, there are 25 opportunities to come and join us. And this will be ongoing, 2015, 2016. For as long as I'm in Columbia, uh, which I expect to be a long time, I'll be excited to lead this. Uh, so if you want to come out, we have a website, www.columbiafamiliesinnature.org. We have a Facebook page. We'll have all the information about our upcoming events. We do ask people to sign up in advance just so I can have materials for everyone um, and welcome everybody with uh, the resources we'd like to share with them. And that's all it takes. You just sign up and uh, complete a little registration form and waiver, but it's all online. We post pictures and information every day on the Facebook page just to keep, keep people engaged and aware of what's happening kind of in the natural world in this area, um, other opportunities to get outside with their kids. And um, it's been a lot of fun. We have, we have families that have come to every single one so far, and we have new families that are coming out every week. Really, the, the more the merrier. It's free. The only cost would only be if we go someplace that requires an entrance fee. Like we will go to Patapsco and that's a $3 per car entrance fee. It's free family fun out in nearby nature. Here are more events coming up this month for you and your family to enjoy. CA's 23 outdoor pools will open on May 24th. To learn more about programs, classes, and pool hours, visit columbiaassociation.org backslash pools. CA's Lakefront Wednesday Lunchtime Concert Series will begin on Wednesday, May 7th, and will run through Wednesday, June 25th. Enjoy live concerts by the downtown Columbia Lakefront every week from 12 to 2 p.m. Bring your lunch and we will provide a free cold beverage. For more information, visit columbiaassociation.org backslash Lakefront Wednesdays. And on May 10th, CA Camps will have an open house from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. at Columbia Gym.
For more information, visit columbiacamps.org or call 410-715-3165. For more information on community events and programs, pick up CA's Summer 2014 Activities Guide at any CA fitness facility or at CA's Welcome Center. We would like to congratulate Columbia Association's Youth and Teen Center on receiving the Young Trailblazers Award from the NAACP. Way to go. We'd also like to congratulate the Columbia Association for receiving the Higher Power Award by the Howard County Board to promote self-sufficiency. Well, that's our show for this month. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.